boys. Mike here. Welcome back to Grampy's Workshop. And today it's warm enough. I think we can put some taps in. See if we can get some uh, maple sap. And uh, later on in the week, maybe we boil down, make some maple syrup. Boy, this is sure sign of spring when we start to put the taps in. So I'm out here at the sugar shack, and uh, I did a lot of uh, work, prep work here this morning. Washed out uh, my bottles. I washed out my bottles. And I have little caps on them with the holes in them. And then I've got uh, my tubes. And the tap that goes in the tree. And we're going to set these up. I'm going to just go around the yard this year because uh, I'm getting too old to go to the woods. <laughs> so I'm going to drill those taps. I'm going to drill out some tap holes, set the taps, hang some buckets, see if we can get some sap. It's sticker time. I love sticker time. My favorite time of the week at Grampy's Workshop. And this week I got some mail uh, from a fellow Nova Scotia channel. Uh, it's called Country Living with the Harnishes. Nice looking sticker, eh? Jennifer and Arliss Harnish from Country Living with the Harnishes. And uh, they wrote me a little note here. It says, Hi Grampy Mike and Nanny. We are so excited to be part of your sticker time. We love your sticker time idea so much that we have decided to do it and we would like to start our sticker wall with one of your stickers. So I sent you a sticker, Jennifer, so hopefully it will be in the mail soon. Uh, I hope you are having a good winter and that you are both are staying healthy. Hopefully this spring and summer we can meet up and maybe even do a video together. Wouldn't that be nice? Jennifer and Arliss Harnish from Country Living with the Harnishes. They have a nice channel, eh? Jennifer has a nice garden there. Her and Arliss put the garden in a couple of years ago and they put a, a little kind of a, well not a shelter, but a, a frame around it and they covered it all with chicken wire to keep the uh, rodents and the birds and everything out of her garden and her garden does really, really nice. And then Arliss has a nice, well it's a Kubota tractor, but it's still a nice tractor, Arliss. <laughs> and he put a cab on it and he's got a super duper winch, a nice winch that he uses because he cuts a lot of wood. It's a good channel. Uh, if I were you, I'd check him out. I'm going to put their sticker up on the wall, Country Living with the Harnishes. I really like that sticker. I'm going to put it right here under Oak Mountain Acots and under Tomoko's Enterprises. Dean at Tomoko's Enterprises. I don't know that I got that on there right straight, but anyways, there it is. Country Living with the Harnishes. It's a really nice channel. And they're from Nova Scotia too. We can't beat that. So, uh, I'm just going to tap some trees in the yard. Just a few things about tapping trees. First of all, your tree, if you're going to tap it, they recommend that it be more than nine inches in diameter. Uh, that's to make sure that you get good healthy trees and also that the tap hole then doesn't damage the tree. But what the tap hole does is uh, as the sap is coming up, the sap wood, which is the outside of the tree, as the sap is coming up, then you drill your hole in the tree somewhere around, you know, they say chest, chest height, but I think anything over three feet off the ground will work good. And then as that sap is coming up where the tap hole is, the sap will start to ooze out that hole. So you drill your hole, put a tap in it, and you collect that sap as it comes up. I find around here at least, uh, as the temperature goes below freezing at night, and then it comes above freezing during the daytime, and uh, that's when the sap likes to run. And for me here, I find, uh, the dew point is what's important. If the dew point is freezing at night and above zero in the daytime, then the sap will go because sometimes it'll be above zero uh, normal temperature wise, but the dew point will still be below zero. So, you know, some of the old guys that I talk to about sap, they say, you know, about minus five, minus eight Celsius at night, about plus five, plus eight Celsius during the day, your sap will go. And I think if that's the case, like plus 8 Celsius, usually the dew point then is above zero. So I think that's where that logic comes from. So I'm going to drill a hole, and I like to drill my holes on the south side of the tree, and I don't think that really matters a whole lot, other than the reason I do that is because at night when it freezes, the sap will freeze in the lines, and then it takes sometimes, you know, middle of the day before they'll thaw out and start to run again. So if I put my tap on the south side of the tree, the sun will get on them quicker, and it'll hopefully melt them quicker and the sap will run quicker. That's the main reason I put my tap on the south side of the tree. I don't think like the south side, north side, west side, don't know, I don't know that makes a difference as far as the concentration of sap. 
All right, so what I do when I tap is I have a, a handheld drill and I have a 3 8 wood auger bit because I'm using the small taps, small spiles. So I'm gonna, just going to pick a spot here that looks kind of halfway clean and I'm going to put my tap hole in. Now I'm going to drill it a little bit up on an angle. You can see that. Uh, I don't want to be close to previous tap holes. I see there's one tap hole, an old one there, although it's all healed over. So I'm going to go, I don't know, right here with it, I think. And I'm going to drill a bit of an upward angle just to help the sap drip out the tap. And I'm going to drill my tap hole about maybe two inches, no more than two inches deep. Another thing when I'm drilling my tap holes, I don't like to leave the bit in the tree too long because I think what that'll do is that'll burnish over the, the, the drilled out hole and maybe uh, prevent sap from flowing. So I'll just do that. And now uh, I can notice already there's sap starting to drip out that hole, so that's good. My uh, tap here, it's just a little, it's a plastic tap and it's made for these 3 8 inch lines and an itty bitty hammer. <laughs> So then, after you blow the, t or when you drill the hole, I mean, you shouldn't blow it to clear the wood shavings away. You shouldn't blow on it because that introduces bacteria. One of the things you want to prevent is bacteria in your sap because that'll make it sour quickly. When you put your tap in, you just tap it until it sounds like it's in there solid. And now I just hang these buckets, and like I say, it's just a four liter water jug. Still have a little water left in that guy from when I washed them out this morning. I washed these jugs out good with uh, chlorine soap and a disinfectant. So I put a little hole in the top so now my sap line will go in that hole. And the reason I do that is because in the springtime when it starts to run sap, the bugs, believe it or not, the bugs will be attracted to that sweet sap and they'll get in your sap bucket and fill it with, not fill it, but there'll be bugs in the top of your bucket. So to try to avoid that, I just drill a hole in the top there. That also helps keep other contaminants and dirt and rainwater out of it as well. So then I just look for a spot to naturally where that would hang. And then I, I just drill a hole in the side of the tree or I put a screw in the side of the tree. <laughs> Whoops. And then you hang your bucket on the screw. Just like that. And I like to set the bucket down so that the tap line doesn't go right to the bottom of the bucket. Let me show you. I don't want that top tap line going right to the bottom of the bucket because if that does fill with sap, and if this bottom line, if the line gets below the level of the sap, then when it freezes, the sap certainly won't go. Anyway, there's one. Now this tree is big enough I could maybe put two taps in it, but we'll see, depending. I don't have many maple trees in the yard. I'd like to get about a dozen taps in, but anyway. I'm going to put one in each tree and then see how I make out and then double them up if I need to. Let's go put another one in now. Now this tree isn't as big so I'm not, I'm, I'm barely able to put just one tap in this guy. So that's what I'll do. I just want to show you this. Okay, I just drilled that hole like not even 30 seconds ago and the sap is dripping out of it. See that? So that's a good sign. I like that. So we'll put the tap in there right quick. There. All right, good start. All right, here's an interesting thing. I've got a, I don't know, a cluster of maples, I guess you'd call that. But there's uh, one, two, three pretty good uh, trees here. This one is just barely big enough to tap. They both sound, they all sound good. So I'm gonna put three taps in this cluster because I think there's three separate trees here. I might be wrong, but we'll see. The thing about tapping, right? You think you got a good tree and you tap it, you're all happy, you come back a day later and there's not a drip in the bucket. All right.
One there. One there. And one there. So I just wanted to show you, I just put these buckets out. And, well, there's not a lot of sap in there, but there is some sap. It also looks like my tap might be leaking. Anyway, we'll see how we make out. Hey, I got my taps in. That's a great sign of spring. This is my favorite time of year, boys. Tap season. Get out in the woods, put some taps in, get some syrup. Oh, yeah, boy, you can't beat that. But this year, I don't think I'm going to make it to the woods. Physically, that's too demanding for me right now. Uh, maybe next year I'll be able to handle that. But I'm just getting too old and decrepit <laughs> to go to the woods. So I just put some taps in around the camp here. I have about 12 taps. No, not about. I put in 12 taps today. And the sap's running already, so that's a good sign. So hopefully I'm going to be able to get enough sap so I can boil by the end of the week. Uh, the, the other thing, too, is uh, I don't want to have a lot of taps put in because the the, the operation I have, it's an 18 inch pan that I boil on a 35,000 BTU cast iron burner. So anybody who's uh, done any sap before knows that 35,000 BTU is not a lot of heat when it comes to boiling sap. So it takes me about 8 or 9 hours to boil off 40 liters of sap and you need to boil 40, you need 40 liters of sap to make 1 liter of syrup. So if I were to get more than 40 liters of sap in a day for example, that would be too much sap for me to handle. So the way I'm set up here, I'm hoping I can get like 20 or 30 liters of sap a day. So in a day or two or three, maybe at the max, I hope to have 40 liters of sap so that I can get boiling and make a liter of syrup. And I don't have a continuous operation. I don't have a fluted pan or anything. It's just a flat pan sitting on a burner. So it's just I just do it in batches. So I just put the sap in. I continue to add the sap as it's boiling. And then when I add my 40 liters of sap, when I have a liter of syrup left in the pan from boiling, I know that's when I'm finished. Like I don't have any, uh, you know, fancy sophisticated way of checking to make sure is this sap, is this syrup ready now or is it too ready or is it too thick? You know, I just, I put 40 liters in, I take a liter out, that's how I know I'm done. <laughs> it's not very scientific the way I run it, <laughs> but it tastes good. <laughs> so anyway, enough about that. I hope you enjoyed this little video about hanging some taps here today, hanging some buckets. Uh, it, you know, if you've got some maple trees, I'd get out and I'd put a few taps in. It doesn't hurt, you know, you don't need to make, you don't need to get 40 liters of sap to make any kind of syrup at all. Even you got 10, 12, maybe even, you know, a d couple of dozen liters of sap and you get that pretty quick, you'd be surprised how much comes out of a tree, then you can make some syrup out of that. So give it a try if you're interested, because you'll enjoy it. In the meantime, take care. Thanks for watching. I'm glad you're here today to help me put the taps in. And we'll see you next time on Grampy's Workshop. We'll talk to you.